Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At Barnabas Health, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners on public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, Life is Better Healthy, Berkeley College, MagnaCare, Kessler Foundation, Changing the Lives of People with Disabilities, The Fidelco Group, Fedway Associates, and by United Airlines. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, Steve Adubato. We're here in beautiful New Providence, New Jersey. I'm here with my colleague, oh, Joanna Gagas, uh, the host of Life and Living. This is a one-on-one uh, -on -one special. Joanna, we're here with the um, New Jersey Sharing Network. Tell everyone what today is. Today's a 5K event. It's actually the five-year anniversary of this event where people come together, both organ tissue donors and recipients, to talk about their stories, to celebrate the lives that have been given and the lives that have been saved. The uh, horn's about to go off. The runners are about to go off now. The walkers, uh, that's what I would be in right now. Um, they'll be going off in a little while. Extraordinary day. They just said it's an emotional event. People are giving life. People have received life. 10,000 people are here today with the New Jersey Sharing Network, a special day. We're about to talk to those people, listen to the countdown. It's a walk, it's a run, it's a special day, but I'll tell you what, the people you're about to meet have given so much and gotten so much. Check it out. Here at the uh, New Jersey Sharing Network event, uh, 10,000 people have come together, and uh, Joe Roth did it by himself. They all called his personal cell phone. He got the, <laughs> Joe, I got to tell you. How do you, how, how do you do it, Joe? It's a talent. I've been working on it for, for 17 years. You know, no, it's, Talk about these folks. Who are they? It's just it's dedicated people who you know, get it, you know, who know what we we're here for, dedicated to our mission and vision, saving and enhancing lives through organ and tissue donation. You know, we're about to talk to some really special people, people who uh, are organ recipients, uh, people who have given uh, the gift of life to others, but also family members who represent those who are not with us any longer, and they gave the gift of life as well. And some are meeting for the first time here today. What's that all about? Well, you know, it's it helps close the circle, so to speak. You know, when somebody goes through the grief of losing a family member through a tragic accident, they become, and yet they see the value in them becoming organ donors. They also want to know that that gift meant something and that it was used and somebody's taking care of it. So over time, the donor families and the recipients come together, not often, but they do come together to meet each other and it becomes like an amazing instant friendship for so many people and we facilitate that. Yeah, talk about the role. Um, we've been partners with the Sharing Network for several years now. Uh, you've seen us on public broadcasting. You've seen us mostly in the studio, but Joanna Gagas and I, my, my uh, co-anchor, we came out here. Um, she said, you got to come, Steve. Last year was extraordinary. Other producers are out here as well, and it's the first time I've actually been to the event. Seeing the video is one thing, but being here is another. It didn't start out with 10,000 people. Oh, no, our first event was about 4,000 people, which even was more than we expected five years ago. We thought it would you know, be about 2,000 people, so we got double that. We estimated we might raise 200,000. We got double that. And each year it's grown and grown and grown to where we've now reached almost the maximum amount of people that we can have on this site. So now we're starting to look at having satellite events, see if we can give people a chance to go to those who couldn't come here. So we had one in March in Bergen County at Bergen Community College. And we have a uh, event. We're hoping that next year we'll also have events somewhere in, near the shore, Monmouth County somewhere. Talk about the role of the Sharing Network so people really understand exactly what you do because as we've talked to folks, they've explained to us that it was the Sharing Network who facilitated the process of, the, of organ donation and 
facilitation is a facilita facilitating is an interesting word. It means different things to different people. What does it actually mean? Well, we are assigned a, a service area by the federal government to uh, coordinate and, and develop relationships with the hospitals in that service area. So we have 54 hospitals that we are affiliated with, and they must, under federal law, refer every death to us for uh, evaluation for, for organ donation. So we have, uh, it's a very labor intensive process, a lot of moving parts to it, but a call comes to us if a patient's on a ventilator and has a chance to, uh, to um, become a donor, we send someone on site, we offer the family the option of donation or if they've already had it, has a, have a organ donation card, we then facilitate or coordinate the recovery of those organs and the allocation of those organs to the, um, to the appropriate transplant center. The emotional and the psychological part of this has got to be, it's hard to even imagine, as we talk to folks, people can get, are very emotional, and you can understand that, or maybe you can't understand unless you've gone through it. How do you deal with that part of it, Joe? Well, there are different, different ways. First off, the donor families, we provide grief counseling to them. We have support groups. We offer them all sorts of ways. We have a, a donor family support group that meets every month or two. We have a donor family volunteer group that, that, that meets with us. And then on the other side of the coin uh, is our staff. Our staff is put under a lot of stress when they go through this thing. And so we, we, um, we also offer uh, ways for our stra staff to decompress and work in this. But the donor families, we have, I mean, the foundation, this walk has given the donor families a lot of ways to deal with their grief and you know, come to some closure at the loss. What does it do for you, this walk? Oh, it just gives me a full... You've had a smile from the minute I saw you this morning. <laughs> well, this is what I live for. I mean, it, uh, you know, I've been 17 years at this. I've, I've been in other industries that do good for people. But in this, every day we're trying to do something good and save a life every day. And to me, you can't do anything better than that. So I love it. And finally, I always ask you this, Joe, and I have to ask you again. The message to everyone watching right now is, oh, the sharing network, what they're doing is great. But what does that have to do with me? Well, if you're not already an organ donor or you, don't, you haven't told a family member you want to be an organ donor, then go to our website, www.njsharingnetwork.org, and there's a button right there in the front, Become an Organ Donor. Hit that button, and it'll tell you exactly how to become an organ donor. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Steve. Great working with you. I'm here with Elise Glennon, who's the Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer of the New Jersey Sharing Network. We're here at the 5K race. Elise, this is five years in now. Talk about the role of the New Jersey Sharing Network. The New Jersey Sharing Network, we're responsible for saving lives through organ and tissue donation. We work with our hospital partners throughout the state to identify potential organ donors, recover organs and tissue for transplant. There are over 5,000 people in New Jersey currently waiting for an organ transplant, and it's our role here to bring all the partners together to ensure those lives are saved. Now, I, I mentioned we're here at the 5K race. It's the fifth year. What does this race and this day hope to do, hope to inspire among New Jerseyans who come? Well, you said it. The big, the big hope is to inspire New Jerseyans to register to be an organ donor. Uh, it is also to honor those organ donors that have passed and have given that gift of life. So you'll see a lot today of, of families and community partners spending time memorializing and honoring their loved ones who gave the gift of life or who have received the gift of life. Uh, and they go on to celebrate and live life to the fullest. You know, when you say we're honoring people who have passed, there is a feeling here today while there is there's absolutely, we're honoring those who, who have given that gift. There's also some celebration, and you can feel it in the people who are here. And it's not just the recipients, but it feels like it's the family members as well of the donors. Explain that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is a day of celebration. Um, when people lose uh, a loved one very close to them, when they have the opportunity to allow that loved one's life to live on in someone else, it really is a true celebration. Their legacy lives on. You'll see many families here today who will meet the recipients of their loved ones either today or next week or in the future whenever they're ready. And there really is a real bond between the families. There really is something very special uh, between the recipient and a donor family. And what a special moment to be able to come here at an event like this and meet the person whose life you've impacted or the person who's impacted your life in such a meaningful way. We're here to raise money, of course, right? As with any event like this, the goal is to raise money. Where does that money go, Elise? 
Uh, well, this is the fifth year of this event, and this year we will exceed a $1 million goal. We're really excited about that. Uh, our foundation board works very hard to identify programs to um, fund with the philanthropic dollars. We have a few different uh, programs that we fund. We fund clinical research, laboratory research. We also fund public education and awareness programs throughout the state of New Jersey. We have um, education in all of the high schools here in New Jersey. We have an exhibit at the Liberty Science Center. We just launched a new online donor registry to allow people easier access to register to become an organ donor. We have funded fa uh, programs for our families, the donor families and the recipients. Um, so the list goes on and on. We're, we're constantly coming up with new ways uh, to spend the philanthropic dollars to ensure ultimately that more lives are saved through organ and tissue donation. You mentioned education. Why is the education component so important? There are so many myths and misconceptions around organ donation, both about uh, the whole idea of it and how it actually happens. So we want to really educate, especially our youth, with the real truths behind organ donation, uh, about how it impacts people's lives, uh, whether you are the donor, the donor family, or the recipient. It's so important because, again, 5,000 people in New Jersey are waiting for an organ transplant, 120,000 people nationally, and only less than 1% of deaths result in organ donation. Why is that? Uh, very few people um, are medically suitable for organ donation. As you can imagine, in order to transplant an organ, that organ needs to be very healthy and very alive to be transplanted. So uh, it, it's, it's a very complicated uh, medical process in order to make that transplant happen. So with less than 1% of our deaths being suitable for organ donation, it's so important that we educate the entire population because if we lose one organ, it's a very big deal. Well, Elise, thank you as always for being out here spreading the word and doing everything that you do to make the New Jersey Sharing Network so successful. Well, thank you so much, Joanna. It's so great to see you again. Thanks for supporting us year after year. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're here with a very uh, special participant today, uh, Pam DeLiso. Pam, you and your team, uh, Savannah's stars. Um, Savannah, your daughter, um, 2009, um, two years old, and uh, she passed but gave an extraordinary gift. Talk about it. Um, Savannah had, unfortunately, a grandma seizure, and she never recovered. So we weren't able, no matter what we did, resuscitate her, the hospital, you know. So we did her DNR and we decided, Nikki and I decided that we were going to donate her organs. Um, we talked to um, the coordinators here and um, they gave us- the sharing network. At the sharing network. Um, the hospital we were at got in contact with them and then um, they called us and made arrangements and they came over and they sat down and talked with me and kind of guided me through the whole process and what it would entail. Um, and she actually, at what we're aware of now, due to what we're allowed to know that other families can share. Um, her heart went to a little boy in Missouri, and she saved two other children as far as we know, but we're not sure what organ they received. Yeah. You know, it's one thing. Um, Pam talks about the fact that, you know, this whole team comes here to New Providence, and the music is upbeat before the walk. But Pam just said to me before we got on camera, it takes about an hour and a half to get here, and they cry as soon as they get on site, and they cry all the way through. Um, you laugh through some of those tears? Always. <laughs> it's, it's always bittersweet because we miss her. We love her. It's very hard. You know, we have other children, but she was our first. And it's hard. No one wants, not as a parent, to lose your child. My God. Like, that has its own grief and everything that goes with it. And... Like I said, we come in the car, we start crying, we get here, we keep crying. We take a lot of hugs on the way and we finish the race, we cry a little bit more and we just breathe. Let me ask you this, Pam. Why do you, why do, you do it? You don't have to, but you choose to. 
<laughs> we do. We just feel like this is our way of saying, you know, people don't realize how precious they have it. And we get it that life is supposed to go the other way around. My kids are supposed to bury me. That's how it works. But because this unfortunately went the other way, she saved other people without even knowing. She's done something with her life beyond what I've done at my age. At two. At two. And they are very, very good. They were very good to me. And it's important that people realize that at any age, this is such a need. And it has such a powerful point in your life where you can be like, her life had purpose and this was a purpose. Why? I may not be okay that she's gone, but this is the reason why she was alive. She was meant to give to somebody else. What message would you send to the rest of us who are blessed enough, fortunate enough to be parents, um, who have never experienced anything like you and your family? What message would you send to us right now? I would just say maybe take a second and think about it. You know, being an organ donor is something as simple as putting it on your driver's license. That's all it is. It's just saying, hey, you know, if truly my time is over, then I'm okay with letting part of me go to save somebody else. And that's all it is. It's just a simple step. And obviously my whole family is a part of that. My team, all is organ donors, we all do it. <laughs> so. By the way, describe the team. I saw your son who was here. He was running all over the place. Uh, yeah, he's four. He's running a mock. That's what we do it for. <laughs> he saw the bouncy houses, and that was his go-to bouncy house. Um, but uh, my team is composed of myself, my children. I have uh, two boys. My oldest is at uh, a birthday party, so he's out with his friends for his birthday party. Um, Nikki is here. That's my spouse, and my mom is always here because that's Grammy. Grammy's always here. You have friends as well. We do. I have a lot of my coworkers and things like that that can make the trip come up. And we vary every year somewhere between six and up to about 20, depending on how many people can come up because it's far. What's this race mean to you? A lot. A lot. We've been here every year. Um, and it makes us feel really good once we leave that this she has a purpose. And we celebrate that when we come. Thank you for everything that you have done, and thank you for what Savannah has done for so many. Thank you. Steve Adubato, more importantly, this is uh, Joe Dahl and his wife, Harriet. There must be a misprint in my producer's notes. Lauren gave me the notes and said that Joe is a uh, heart transplant recipient. It said this was last October. Wait a minute, hold on. Are you saying it's less than a year that you got a new heart? Yes, sir, less than a year. And you look like this? Yes, I do. How great is this? It's awesome, it really is. I gotta ask you, we're at the, um, uh, an extraordinary event. It's the 5K walk, it's a run. The New Jersey Sharing Network is here. We moved a little bit further away from the music. There's so much activity. There's so many people who wanna be here with the Sharing Network. What does this event mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me. This is my first. Last year, I was pretty sick uh, in the hospital a couple of times, not able to do anything. Uh, now I'm back on my feet. I'm able to play golf. I'm back to work part time. Uh, is golf as frustrating for you as it is for me? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very humbling game. The new heart doesn't change that. No, it does not. <laughs> it, and it doesn't make you any better either. <laughs> well, what has it done for you in your life? Uh, it's given me back things that I have not had for a long time. I've been sick since I was 39 years old, and uh, I've had many different types of procedures over the years, bypasses, valves, uh, stents. Uh, I just, less than 40 hours after I received my heart, our granddaughter was born, our first granddaughter. So this is a big opportunity for me to be able to uh, watch her grow up now. What would you say to folks watching right now? Because we're doing this program, we're doing all this work in connection with organ and tissue donation to try to raise awareness, to try to let folks understand how great the need is and how much of an impact you can make. Did you realize the impact that someone could have by giving the gift of life? Um, I did realize it because I know several people that have donated organs, their families, but when it really hits your own family, it becomes much more real. And it's a, it's a precious, precious gift, and I would really ask that people consider donating because it's, it's so special and it does change your life. What impact has it had on your family having 
Joe be as healthy as he is today compared to what was? Well, we've been able to actually get our life back because there were so many things that we could not do for a long time. Um, it limited where we could go in terms of vacation. Um, just his, his physical well-being, you know, just feeling tired all the time. And especially now, like we said, with our new grandchild, it's a major improvement for us. Describe life for you, the new grandchild. Oh, it's awesome. Just actually awesome. She's a, she's a beautiful little girl. She's down in Georgia on vacation right now. And uh, she's meant a lot to us, both of us. Message to those watching right now on public television and Fios about the gift of life and the need to uh, help others. I, I never realized what, what it would be like to have something like this happen in my life. It's truly a miracle. Uh, and I want to help through the sharing network and other things that I can do to educate people so that they can also put themselves in a position to help somebody like me or to have their families helped also. What would you say to the folks? By the way, it is the sharing network, New Jersey Sharing Network. They're special people. You know, it's funny, a day like this, you see all the activity, you see the 10,000 people coming together walking and running and you hear the music and you, you, you see the festivities. But what you don't see is the 364 other days in the year where they're doing what they do every year to raise awareness, to help people, to help families who, are, who have made the decision to give, people on the other end who are receiving. What would you say to the team, the staff at the New Jersey Sharing Network? They've done a wonderful job. Uh, I'm just amazed at all the things that they can do, uh, the processes that take place around here, the way that they have to coordinate an effort when uh, when a donor is available to give organs to somebody. Well, sorry for interrupting, Joe. Describe what they did for you and your family. What they did for me? I, I was in the hospital waiting for a heart last September, and I expected to be there through Christmas. I received a heart in 23 days, which was pretty amazing, and it allowed me to be back home with my family, to see my grandchild, uh, even earlier this year to do some traveling and see people that we have not seen in many, many years. But the Sharing Network made that process oh, oh, work. Absolutely. They absolutely make it work. Um, it's it's a, a consolidated effort. If you if anybody gets a chance to come up here and just tour the building and see the, the facility itself, the labs they have in here, and to get to work with the people that are putting this on today for, uh, for people like me and for the donors' families. We're happy for both of you. Congratulations on your new grandchild. And um, I hope your golf game gets better because uh, it's frustrating. But the most important thing is you have your life back, and we wish you nothing but the best. Have a great time today. Steve, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. This is Linda Wozniacki, and she's the Family Services Coordinator with the New Jersey Sharing Network. There's a lot of talk today about what organ and tissue donation is, but what is the role of Family Services Coordinator? We go into hospitals when families are making end-of-life decisions. Uh, we help support them through that process. And then when the conversation about organ donation comes up, we help them navigate that process as well, answering any questions they have, and hopefully um, if they wish to donate their loved one's organs, we support them through that. And Now, Linda, how many people do you approach in that hospital setting who have never actually heard about or considered organ donation? I would say it's a really big percentage. Most people don't have it on their licenses, so this is the first time that families are hearing about it, and we have to explain the whole process to them. There is sometimes a misconception that a person in the hospital, in a hospital setting, won't get the same kind of care. At what point is your team called in, and is that true? Uh, that's absolutely not true. Um, if anything, potential organ donors are treated more aggressively because we want uh, the organs to be as healthy as possible, but really it's all about saving lives. So obviously the person that's right there is the person that is the most important life to save. But when it's an unrecoverable uh, situation, then that's we only go in after someone has been pronounced dead. There are a lot of decisions that have to be made right there on the spot, from the family deciding that they are going to donate to then 
deciding where the organs go and with several organs that could be donated, how do you manage that? How does that all happen and within such a short amount of time? We have an incredible team of um, people on the scene and behind the scenes. Uh, once a family has consented to donation, there is something that goes on behind the scenes with allocation. It's a national computerized network where all of the lab work is done, matching is done, um, all sorts of tests are done to see whether or not um, organs are healthy enough to be able to be transplanted. So it, it actually takes about 24 hours for all of that to happen, but it also has to happen very quickly. What has this job and, and this position done for you personally in terms of touching so many lives? Well, my dad um, was a tissue donor, and I was actually approached in the hospital when he was brain dead for donation. And for me, it's been an incredible healing to know that my dad was able to be a donor, and I know that I can help people who are going through the same thing, be there to support them, and know how much comfort they're going to get out of their loved one being able to um, save and enhance lives. Linda, was that the point for you at which you decided this is what you wanted to do with your life when you saw your dad go through it? Um, it was after becoming involved with the Sharing Network as a volunteer first and seeing what a top-notch organization they are. I'm a social worker by, um, by career, and so when I was in a position to look for work, this was the only place that I wanted to be. Well, we thank you so much for your service. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, Berkeley College, MagnaCare, Kessler Foundation, The Fidelco Group, Fedway Associates, and by United Airlines. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.